வணக்கம் தி மஸ்ட் நோ சீரீஸ் சிம்பிளிஃபைங் லேர்னிங் மாடிஃபிகேஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி அட்வான்ஸ்மெண்ட் ஃபிளாப் In this video we shall learn about the different modifications of the advancement flap. We all know that the advancement flap is a flap that moves forward. But there are so many modifications that we need to know so that we can apply them in the necessary situations. We shall now see a broad classification of advancement flaps. This classification is based mainly on the alterations in design of the advancement flap. The unilateral advancement flap is the commonly done procedure. It is otherwise known as the classical advancement flap. The classical advancement flap has this basic design. This unilateral flap when done from two directions becomes the bilateral advancement flap. The design of the bilateral advancement flap can be for a square defect. Here the defect is made square and is divided into two equal sized rectangles. Advancement flaps are planned for each of these two rectangular defects and advanced the final suture line is like this. Advancement flaps can also be planned for circular defects as represented here. Flaps from both sides in the form of V can be advanced and this will be the final suture line. Such bilateral advancement flaps can be typically be planned for defects on the forehead especially central defects advancement flaps can also be designed in such a way that they are bipedicled the defect is usually made elliptical the bipedical advancement flap is planned on one side of this elliptical defect the width of the flap is twice the width of the defect and the length of the flap is four times the length as shown in the diagram after the bipedical flap is advanced there may be a need for a skin grafting of the secondary defect the bipedical advancement flap can typically be planned on the scalp or on defects on the shin of the tibia the next modification is the a to t flap the circular defect shown is converted into a triangular defect and flaps are raised from both sides to advance to cover the defect excision of burrows triangle on both sides may be done to enhance the advancement of the flaps the final suture line usually settles in this pattern this design of advancement flap is usually selected for areas where one side is an important landmark like the upper lip vermilion or the eyebrows next comes the important design of the vy advancement flaps the basic principle of vy advancement flaps is that the flap is shaped like a v and the secondary defect caused by raising this flap is closed in the pattern of a y since the v shape goes completely around the flap the blood supply comes from what is known as the subcutaneous pedicle so there is no actual pivot point for this flap but there is a pivot plane that is the subcutaneous pedicle of this v flap forms the plane which prevents the flap from advancing further the vy advancement flap finds use in resurfacing defects on the face cheeks and sacral pressure sores the flap is also used widely in resurfacing fingertip injuries this is an example of a vy flap done for resurfacing an amputation of the tip of the middle finger of the hand in a similar way y to v advancement flaps also can be done here a y shaped incision is made the flap is raised and it is closed in the form of a v these flaps can be used specifically in two conditions in hand surgery one is release of contractures and second is making incisions for dupuytren's contracture release after the contracture release is done there is going to be excess skin needed for closure of the suture line so if the incisions were marked as y they can be closed as a v one of the applications for the vy advancement flaps is for fingertip injuries there are many modifications of this vy flap for fingertip injuries which we shall see now the atasoy volar vy advancement flap is ideally indicated for dorsal oblique amputations of the fingertip it gives a very good contour 
of the fingertip and sensate skin on the tip. The cutler lateral BY advancement flap is ideally indicated for transverse amputations of the fingertip and these two flaps are described in detail in the separate video on the atosoy flap and the cutler BY advancement flaps. The Moberg advancement flap is a type of advancement flap used for thumb tip defects. It gives a good sensate skin on the tip of the thumb but has a small disadvantage in that there will be a minimal flexion deformity at the interphalangeal joint of the thumb. The Venkataswami flap is also a type of VY advancement flap which is indicated for oblique defects on the fingertip. It is based on the neurovascular bundle on one side and is advanced to cover the defect. There is one disadvantage in this flap in that the distal portion of the flap may be insensate as it is supplied by the contralateral digital nerve which is not included in this flap. The segmular advancement flap is also a modification of the VY flap where VY flaps are harvested based on both side neurovascular bundles so the entire flap is sensate. There is another modification in the volar VY advancement flap where the flap is taken wide and then the distal edges are brought towards each other and sutured to each other to provide a bulk and padding to the newly reconstructed fingertip or the pulp. The next modification of the VY advancement flap for that fingertip is the Jigan flap which is a French word which denotes one within the other like this set of tables. The first flap that is the blue colored flap is first raised and within this flap another VY advancement flap is raised and this flap has its own movement as shown by the blue colored arrow. Now another VY advancement flap is raised within this blue colored flap and this flap has an advancement as shown by the pink colored arrow. This is a clinical example of the Jigan flap.